Remember to visit Dan's Dinosaurs for all your Nanmu dinosaur needs. Dan consistently offers great discounts on pre-orders, and as always, if you choose to shop from him, be sure to mention that your friend Killer Shrew fan sent you in the comment section at checkout. Now with that out of the way, let's get on to the review. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Nanmu November. For the final video of the month, I wanted to do something special. You know what that means. Oh yeah, it's time for another episode of Head to Head. For today's face-off, we have two icons from my childhood. In corner one, it's Rebor's Vanilla Ice, the mountain variant. Measuring in at 15 and 3 quarters inches long, or around 40 centimeters, and standing in at just under 5 inches off the ground, or roughly 12.5 centimeters at the hip, this heavy hitter is one of two figures Rebor produced that were based on the Vestatosaurus Rex of Peter Jackson's King Kong. For many fans, myself included, it was an absolute dream come true to be able to have a nice, hefty model of such a cool creature. However, with only two paint schemes released, it would take another three years before we were able to complete our V-Rex packs. Enter the Challenger Nanmu Shadow Monarch. At just over 15 inches long, or around 38 centimeters, and six and a quarter inches off of the ground, or roughly 16 centimeters, Nanmu's take on the V-Rex finally provided collectors with the opportunity to complete the trio. Now if you know me, you know I absolutely love that movie, and my favorite part is easily the epic battle between King Kong and the trio of gnarly V-Rexes. Needless to say, I was excited to add all three of these figures to my collection, as I felt the combination of both Rebor's figures and the Nanmu counterpart made for the perfect pack. But let's say you only want one of these models to rule your Skull Island display. If that were the case, which of these brutes deserves a spot on your shelf? Will it be Rebor's hulking figure, or Nanmu's beautiful beast? Well, let's find out on Head to Head. Round 1 Price. As per usual with this round, Rebor comes out of the gate with a distinct advantage over the competition, providing fans with an absolute bang for your buck beast of a figure. At around $45 before shipping, this piece makes for a very detailed, high quality model complete with an articulated jaw and bendable rubber tail at a modest price. Meanwhile, Nanmu Shadow Monarch will run you $75 for the basic price, and if you're hoping to include that eye-catching display base, you'll have to be prepared to shell out an additional $15, bringing the total for that figure up to a whopping $90 before shipping. Although this is still a very reasonable price to pay for such a beautifully sculpted and painted model, at double the cost of Rebor's offering, the winner of the first round seems obvious. Winner, Rebor. Round 2, The Sculpt. Both of these figures offer the usual staggering levels of sculptural detail we've come to expect from these two top tier companies. You can see that Nanmu have covered the face of their figure in uneven scales of varying shapes and sizes, as well as crocodilian scoots and ridges along the nasals. Meanwhile, the teeth have been sculpted in that jagged and overlapping manner and are cast in that yellowed, semi-translucent plastic. As you move down the body, you can see the crocodilian treatment of the hide running down the neck, shoulders, thighs, and across the entire dorsal region. Meanwhile, the flanks of the figure have been covered in a leathery skin texture, and despite the relatively static pose, you have got some nice areas of pulling skin, particularly in the neck, around the shoulders, and bunching up just past the thighs of the animal at the base of the tail. The tail itself has been covered in rectangular scales, further speaking to that very crocodilian aesthetic seen in both the original 1933 King Kong and the designs from Weta. Yet despite the largely uniform appearance of the texture, there's actually a ton of variation in style across the board here. No two scales are the same, making for a very meticulous and lifelike sculpt from Nanmu. Meanwhile, Rebor have added their usual amount of texture to their sculpt of the V-Rex. You can see this figure is absolutely covered in scale details, with small rounded raised scales creating a chainmail-like appearance that covers the neck, flanks, and limbs of the figure. You have got some variation on the head, with larger, more ornamental scales running along the top of the head and growing along the oral margin, where you can see those yellowed interlocking teeth sprouting directly from the scales. Rebor have also included a raised nasal boss, along with all of those crocodilian scoots along the back of the neck, 
back, shoulder blades, thighs, and tail. Whereas it is true that Rebor have a tendency to over-texture their pieces and exaggerate the detail, this is one case where it actually doesn't work against them, as the repetitive detail work does suit the crocodilian aesthetic of the film's designs. Although both of these figures offer incredible levels of detail for the price, the greater variety in scale shapes and sizes, as well as all the work with the skin, breathes a certain life into the Nanmu sculpture that Rebors is unfortunately missing, allowing Nanmu to take round two. Winner, Nanmu. Round three, the paint. Both of these figures offer their own take on the color scheme of the dinosaurs in the film. Rebor's figure is painted a light blue with a cream underbelly that transitions beautifully into the colors of the rest of the body. The tail also has some nice breakup with spots and stripes that eat down onto the cream of the underbelly. This same cream tone has also been utilized in a wash across the entire body, helping all of that detail pop while also giving the figure the appearance of being dirty from its life in the jungles of Skull Island. Roughly the same idea would be used on the jungle variant of the figure, only with a more green tint to it overall. Both figures have a good amount of what I call eyeshadow, which helps the beady little eyes pop. The plate scaling along the toes have a nice golden coloration to them, and the teeth are made of that yellowed, semi-translucent plastic that I love. This is another area of difference in the models, however, as you can see the jungle variant has much more yellowed teeth, while the interior of the mouth is a nice glossy reddish pink. Meanwhile, the mountain version boasts a desaturated purple tone inside the mouth. The Nanmu figure has a very similar idea, with a cream underbelly and bluish dorsal region and face. However, upon closer inspection, you can see there are more subtleties to the paint across the board, with a sort of peach tone being implemented as a transitionary color between the two primary tones. You also have some yellows applied to the feet and tail of the figure, as well as some browns gradiating up from the limbs. We also see small details, like the rot being added to those gnarly teeth, as well as more variation in color inside the mouth itself. All of this makes for a much more visually interesting color scheme that has been pleasingly applied across the model, granting Nanmu the edge in this round. Winner, Nanmu. Round 4, Display. When it comes to the overall presentation of these figures, the two are quite different in their approach. Nanmu have posed their shadow monarch standing tall and proud with both legs planted firmly beneath it as it twists slightly to the left. As an extra addition to the model, you are able to pick up this stellar base that's been littered with skulls and bones of giant apes. It's pretty cool that they're all different sizes and that one has the lower mandible, as this provides the base with a bit of a story. Perhaps the V-Rex has been picking off younger members of the clan before taking on the leader and bringing them down. These remains are very well painted and when displayed on the base, the V-Rex has a truly intimidating look. I will say it doesn't really sit flush on the base when you try to line it up with the prints, which is a bit distracting and feels somewhat like an oversight on Nanmu's part. Still, it is not enough to derail the overall effect, which is quite wonderful. As far as articulation goes, you have got a joint on the jaw which can be opened to about that wide to reveal more rows of uneven teeth and all that work in the mouth. It is a pretty stiff joint, and I'm not sure if it can be opened further, but I've seen some people have popped off the jaw trying, so I'm not willing to risk it. As for Rebor's figure, you can see that they have posed their V-Rex mid-stride while being hunkered down low to the ground, as if it's stalking some hapless prey item or eyeing a certain Anne Darrow as she stands between the legs of a giant ape. And for those of you wondering, yes, it does indeed work on the Nanmu base. As far as articulation on this figure, you have got the standard articulating jaw, which can open incredibly wide to give you that shovel-like gaping maw. The tail is also the usual soft plastic built around a bendable wire, which allows you to curl it and raise it in different ways to achieve some variation on the overall appearance and attitude of the model. It's also just useful for general display, as being able to manipulate the tail allows you to fit the figure in and around areas you otherwise wouldn't. Ultimately, this round comes down to functionality versus presence. Although the base does give Shadow Monarch some extra presence on the shelf, the chosen pose does feel a bit too stiff in the grand scheme of things. Whereas the more active pose, combined with the variation in displays you can get with Vanilla Ice, is enough for Rebor to rise above and take the round. Winner, Rebor. Round 5, 
Screen accuracy. As always, one of, if not the most important category is perhaps the most difficult to judge. To make matters worse, we have three designs to go off of, as each animal was unique in some way in the film. And it seems that both models have a little bit of give and take when it comes to including notable features in their designs. When it comes to the work Weta put into the design of their V-Rexes, there were some distinct features. For starters, the V-Rex had significantly thicker, bulkier heads that were quite large relative to their body mass. They were also shorter and more compact when compared to their Tyrannosaurus Rex ancestors. When comparing the two side by side, both have that distinct oval shape, yet the Rebor offering has a much more upturned snout in comparison to Nanmu's, resulting in a much stockier shape overall. You can definitely see just how much more bulky Vanilla Ice's skull is when you look at them from above. Nanmu's just feels slightly elongated in comparison, resulting in a sort of uncanny valley effect when viewed in profile. Whereas one of the on-screen specimens did have a slightly longer skull shape, this is still a blow to the overall screen accuracy. That isn't to say it doesn't evoke the feel of the V-Rex, in fact, when viewed from the front, it looks the spitting image of the creature from the film, while also capturing a lot of the same character, something that can't really be said for Rebor's offering, which only manages to capture the broad strokes. But aside from the skull, some other distinctive features of the creature from the film include a third digit on the hands, something Shadow Monarch has, while Rebor's only has two. Meanwhile, the larger feet of the creature feels appropriately captured on Rebor's model, while Nanmu seems to suffer from some dainty feetsies. Vanilla Ice also has the distinct tail knob seen in the design of the film, something that is once again absent from Nanmu's offering. As a final interesting feature of the V-Rex, we'll have to look below the surface. The creators gave them a narrow, short rib cage that results in a gap at the end of the ribs and just before the hips. You can kind of get a sense of that gap on both of these figures, as the torsos on both are slimmer compared to the wide hips. Rebors isn't quite as round as Nanmu's, however, which better reflects the idea of a narrow, short rib cage. To break all of that down, Rebor gets the skull shape, tail, feet, and torso right, while Nanmu nails the integument, teeth, and hands. With all of this in mind, when it comes to the big picture, Rebor actually edges it out, allowing them to take the final round and the competition. Winner, Rebor. Of course, the final category of screen accuracy is a bit more fluid than what we typically see on the channel. Instead of dealing with one specific example, we have three, and three specimens that were described by their creators as inbred hillbillies at that. Meaning any deviation in design on Nanmu's part could be chalked up to variation between specimens. That, and as stated previously, when viewed head on, it does appear to hit the nail on the head, only losing some points in profile and when it comes to specific defining features that are missing. Overall, I do think Nanmu's is the better done offering in regards to both sculpt and paint, but at double the price of Rebor's offering, that's just something you expect, as opposed to something it necessarily has on the much cheaper model. Still, I think they all work great together, and since there were three in the film, I'd say this is one case where it's fine to have at least one of each. Do you agree with our verdict? Which V-Rex is your favorite and why? Be sure to continue the debate in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to let me know which figures you want to see go head-to-head -head in the next installment. Thanks as always for tuning in to Nanmu November, and I hope to see you again real soon.